still in Article 110, talking about Section 110.22, Identification of Disconnecting Means. The requirement for marking the supply circuit of a disconnecting means was clarified. And let's just be honest here, I was fixed. You know, look, we're humans. Sometimes we make mistakes, and in the 2020 version of the code, there was a good intent on this section, but it didn't quite say what it needed to say. So let's take a look at what the requirements are for marking disconnecting means. Now, 110.22a, this part did not change. It says, listen, every disconnecting means must be legibly marked to indicate its purpose unless the purpose is obvious due to its location. All right, so here I have a, uh, a multifamily dwelling. I've got three different units, and I've got the house meter. So here is the disconnect for this unit. Here's the disconnect for that unit. Here's the disconnect for that unit. So yeah, we, we have to tell people what the disconnecting means is doing, unless it's obvious. Look, if I walk up to a disconnect outside, and I can see some liquid-tight conduit going out of it, and it terminates to an air conditioner, Pretty obvious that that's the air conditioner disconnect. Do I have to mark the disconnect to say, hey, this is for the air conditioner? Well, no, it, it's obvious, right? So I don't have to do that. But if it's not obvious, got to tell people what the disconnecting means are doing. For other than one and two family dwellings, that marking must indicate the power source and the location of that power source, unless both are obvious. All right, so. Here we've got this disconnecting means. It says it's the main disconnect. Now, if we had some more context of the installation, maybe that actually does tell us what it does, right? Now, main disconnect, okay, well, main disconnect for what? Well, it could be obvious. Maybe I can see some conduit coming out here, or maybe it's in a, an equipment room and there's only one thing in the equipment. So we've marked the purpose, unless the purpose is obvious. And again, the marking must also include the power source and its location, unless both are obvious. So it's fed from panel 3H27, circuit 13. Okay, cool. Well, that's good. I know that it's coming from that panel and which circuit. I don't know where that panel is, though. So I'm going to have to mark, hey, listen, by the way, that is on the second floor east wing or whatever is going to be a sufficient amount of data all right but we need to tell people how to shut things off it's not enough to 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 know what the disconnect does because what if i have to change fuses in the disconnect it would be nice to shut off the line side of the fuse i've had plenty of installations where you go up in a in a building and you've got you know 100 disconnects and 100 motors but yeah, I can, I can shut off individual disconnects for the motors, but I have no idea how to shut off the supply side of the disconnect. And if I have to work on the supply side of the disconnect, well, you know, I've, I've said this a lot. We, we can't just beat up electricians with OSHA and NFPA 70E and scream at them and say, hey, we've got to work safe and shut it off. Well, you have to give them a realistic way to do it. This gives them a realistic way to do it, right? Now I can actually look at it and know how to shut it off. So I think this is a good change. The, the change just kind of fixed a loophole. Before it said, you don't have to mark the function of the disconnect if the function is obvious, and you don't have to, you don't have to mark the power source if the function is obvious. Okay, well that's dumb, right? I don't have to mark the source if the source is obvious. I don't have to mark the purpose if the purpose is obvious, and that's what it says now. So looking at this example, my air conditioner don't need to mark its function because its function, its purpose is obvious. But the source is not obvious and the location of that source is not obvious. So I would have to look at this disconnect and it would tell me how to shut off the line side of the disconnect, right? It's panel one, circuit six, electrical equipment room, something like that. And of course, the marking must be of sufficient durability to withstand the environment involved. And you know that the NEC doesn't give you any more information than that. It doesn't say, hey, look, does it have to be in pencil? Does it have to be in ink? Does it have to be in Korean? Does it have to be in English? Uh, that's left up to the authority having jurisdiction. There might be instances where pencil or pen is preferred. There might be instances where different languages, you know, that, that's going to depend on the facility and, uh, and the people involved. So there you go, 110.22. I think they did some good work in that section.